Welcome, welcome, welcome. I wanted to do something kind of um, about the basics of getting organized. Um, I guess it's a little bit of the reason most people call me to get organized. It's three areas where people struggle figuring out what to do first, next, after that. Um, so it, I'm just calling it three things about organizing. And hopefully it's going to help you get a little traction on getting better organized for yourself. Um, the first thing that people struggle with is probably knowing where to start. I have so much. I'm so overwhelmed. There's so many things. There's so many projects. There's so many piles. Where do I even start, right? So think about um, the fact that it doesn't matter where you start. The trick is to start because everything we do is connected to everything else we do. And so if you start here where it's annoying you, you'll clear that up and then you won't be as annoyed and you can move on to the next section. If you start in a place that's really easy, you get practice on making better decisions on an area that's easy and isn't going to be super frustrating to do. If you start on the hardest place, um, you will be making big decisions that have been weighing you down and you'll free up energy to make other decisions. So it actually doesn't matter where you start. The trick is to, once you start, to work methodically uh, and regularly throughout your home or office or space, wherever you're organizing. It's to chunk it down, do a small area, honor it, move to the next area. Um, and the way to not have it get mixed up and messed up in between sessions is to really focus on honoring the work you've done. If it's cleaning off this much of your desk, that's all you do, but don't mess up that area of your desk. If it's um, the whole garage, don't mess up the garage. Pull those cars in there immediately so there's less space for you to put other stuff down. Um, anything you can do to help yourself be finished with a space. And I don't mean be completely finished with the labels and the bins and everything before you move on to the next space. I mean, is that area, is everything in that area been looked at? Has everything been looked at? Has everything been decided about? Don't kick the decisions down the road unless it's in your maybe pile. We talked about yes, no, maybe method a while back. So you can look that up. Um, but really you begin at the beginning Whatever the problem area, the biggest, the place it'll have the biggest impact or the easiest, you get to decide. It's just a matter of continuing and not second guessing that you decided to do it in the right way because there is no wrong way. It's just get started. Whether it's picking up one piece of paper that doesn't seem to be taking up that much space or tackling a whole garage or a whole closet or something like that. So start with something small, build up but it doesn't actually matter which space you start with. Every little bit helps. All right. The second reason people call me all the time is paper and they don't know what to do with their paper. And so they don't start their paper. And the trick is, um, again, every little piece counts. So whether it's a receipt that you do know what to do with or something you're going to have to do a little bit of investigation about, the more you can consolidate and curate the paper, the better off you're going to be. So gather paper from all over the place and put it into one big pile. One big pile is so much easier than 87 small piles. It feels less overwhelming. It's a more contained area. Chances are you can put it into a box or a bin so that it, it doesn't get scattered all over the place by pets and kids um, or by your own resorting effort. Um, and then the trick is to actually make decisions. Paper is self-correcting. So the more decisions you make from the top of the pile, the more things are expiring at the bottom of the pile. And when you get to the bottom of the pile, more things will be gone, right? It's, I call it the self-correcting pile. And this is the place where you can give yourself a lot of grace with the maybes. I don't know if I need that yet, or I don't know if this is the most current version. And you just move those along while you get rid of the things you do know about that expired coupon, that receipt for something you decided not to return, um, you know, the gift you decided to keep, all the things that you know for sure you don't need, the marketing inserts from inside bills, 
um, just keep whittling it down all the extra envelopes when things arrive in the mail, all the extra packaging around things that you have purchased, get rid of those things, take care of the, and then you know, which things you have to investigate, which things you might need to actually take a second look at or figure out, um, more, uh, details about. And then once you've gone through the decision-making part, part, that's when you set up the system of what kinds of papers are in my life. What do I need to keep track of? And that's when you set up the system. So the reasons paper is hard is you think you have to know everything before you start and you don't know how to create a system. Systems are the hard part. Systems are the part that you need to learn about, but you don't know what kind of system is going to work for you until you get rid of all the excess paper in the first place. So start with the excess paper. And then you can always set up a starter system and then move on to um, a better system as, as you go. Sorry about the phone, forgot to turn it off. Um, okay, so again, start wherever you can, make the decisions you can and move on from there. The third reason people call me or tell me they haven't gotten organized yet is they don't have time to. Well, we just talked a little bit about that, right? If you don't have time to get organized, you certainly don't have time to be organized, but you're wasting an awful lot of time being disorganized. So what are you going to give up to get organized? A little bit of time. The more you have control over in your environment, the more you know where your things are and where they are going to be kept and where to put them, the more you don't have to think about them. And the more time you free up because your brain isn't thinking about them. I've used the example before ice cream goes in the freezer. You don't find ice cream laying out all over people's homes. It's because they know it goes in the freezer, right? Maybe the butter goes in the butter dish. Maybe the toilet paper goes in the bathroom or should go in the bathroom. I don't really like shoulds, but I suggest you keep your toilet paper in the bathroom because that's where you use it. Um, but there's little things, right? Coats go in the coat closet. Cars go in the garage. Little bits of knowing where your things go save the time. So wherever you can start organizing, you're going to start saving energy and time. And then you'll get more time back so that you have time for the bigger projects that seem like um, they're, that are harder. Um, when, when you have time kicking it down the road means you don't really want to make the decisions and it's not all that important or you would take care of it now, like ice cream in the freezer. Ice cream goes in the freezer. So put the soup cans in the pantry, right? Where, where can you just take care of it now, right now, real quick, that will save you a lot of time later, instead of dumping something on the ground and having to pick it all up and figure out where it goes, then put it away first. It takes the same amount of time to put something away in the right place as it does to put it away in the wrong place. It actually takes more time to put it in the wrong place because later on you'll have to adjust that and the thing you displaced by putting the wrong thing in the wrong place, right? It all builds. So those are my suggestions for getting started with organizing when you don't know where to start, when you think you need more information and when you think you don't have time, you now have a plan of action. Um, all right. I'll see you again next Monday. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this, if you have ideas for any topics, um, I'm happy to cover them. And thank you so much for joining me. All right, see you next week.